if she had the car looked at by her husband, who's, you know, experienced, and he said this is okay, put her son in the car to travel six hours out to deliver this car to you, do you really believe that she either knew or could it be reasonable that her husband just made a mistake? I feel like they didn't actually look it over to figure out that it was safe. I figured that they just went ahead and sold it to them. Like, here you go, have a car. Yeah, it's safe because they wanted to sell it. I don't think they actually looked it over. And endanger their own child? Yeah, because they didn't look at it any further. I think they just wanted to sell the vehicle. You could have a seat. Okay. So how did this play out? After the van was abandoned, I still tried to do my best to try and help things out. I tried to see if there was something that I could possibly do to help get it or back or something, which I was unable to. So finally, I was like, you know, I, I can't keep doing this. You either need to produce the van in working order, because it was in working order when I gave it to her, or pay the cost of the, the van. And the third so How did it get towed? Who towed it? I have no clue. Where is it? I can tell oh, you that. Ahead. It would be Exhibit A, page 5. It shows the dates and times of it being towed by Pro Towing. And on page 6, it shows the amount that it cost to have Whoa. it towed because it was towed by Motel 6. They called the, the tow company. Okay. Have and it's it. going to cost $2,300 to get it out? Yes, ma'am. And actually, that tow company closed last month. So what happened to the car? They, um, they actually will auction them off anywhere from 60 to 90 days. That's how long they will allow it to sit in their yards, and then they, they auction them off. And in regards to not looking the van over, we actually took a, lot, a great deal of time looking it over because originally we did replace the rack and pinion. That was the very first part that we replaced. When did you do that? We did that four or five weeks before we did the power steering because we didn't have the money because it was a, like a $500 part for the rack and pinion. So was that like a couple months before she ended up taking possession yes. of the car? Yes, I had told her that we had done the rack and pinion and that that was not the cause. I would never ever put my child or any other child in, in danger. Ms. Kelly, you said that you spent $900 putting work into this car. Correct. For a car that's like 15 years old, is that really unreasonable? No, it's not completely unreasonable, no. And as old as the car is, do you think that maybe it was not so smart of an idea to drive it eight hours away? It was supposed to be safe, so that's what I went off of. Didn't you have issues with it after? Yes, there was air bubbles in the steering line. And then you got that fixed? No, it kind of, we were just waiting for it to work itself out and it never did, it got. So there were issues there, but then you still drove it eight hours away. Yes, I did. With a problem. Yes. And you said you thought it was safe based on what she said or based on what your dad said? Cause you said you had your dad Based said. on what her and my father had said, yeah. I'm gonna open it up to my colleagues. You said in your complaint that after some time of difficulties, you dropped the selling price of the van to $2,000. I had offered to drop it to help them out because they did take it to a mechanic and in the text, and I do have the photo on my phone, and it mm -hmm. circled, just keep up on the payments. I says, we were willing to do it as long as you keep up on your payments. And no payment was ever made. So at the end, it was like, that's no longer an offer. You didn't make any payments. OK, so my last question is, you said that you gave her the option to give you back the vehicle right away. Yes. Why didn't you take her up on that? At that point in time, I was in a really big bind. I had to work or I wasn't going to be able to make my bills. And I was hoping that that was the last of the issues and that it was done and fixed at that point. I have no further right. questions. We're going to excuse the parties while we deliberate in this matter. Thank you both okay. very much. The legal decision that we would normally make under the circumstances, given the testimony and the evidence, wasn't really possible here because it would most likely be to unwind the sale. There was clearly a mutual mistake of fact in what took place. There really was a problem with the steering beyond what you turned over to her. Both of you didn't really realize that. And so we probably would have said, look, we have to unwind the sale. We're kind of left unable to do that. Clearly, Ms. Pallone, you no longer have a vehicle, right? You're entitled to some compensation. So under the circumstances, the most equitable decision that we can arrive at is to award the plaintiff the revised diminished price of $2,000. So the judgment is for the plaintiff in the amount of $2,000, and we wish you both the best. Yes.